We got to record video. We're doing that now. All right, we're recording audio, recording video. It is time for this show to start in three, two, one. You're really a couple of spooksters, aren't you? <laughs> now, let's turn on the juice and see what shakes loose. Ghosts, they're real. You want a cigarette? Oh, no, thank you. They're armed. They're dangerous. We're going to have some last. <laughs> Ice fucking. It's showtime. You from LJ. Now you're playing with power. I'm not even sure. Wow. I'm not even really. I like it. It may not be real. It might be fake. I don't know. I like it. I have no idea. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Play Retro or here for the first time. I don't know when you got here. I don't want to assume anything. Okay. <laughs> Maybe uh, you just arrived because someone calls your name three times. Who that's knows? right. You never know. I'm one of your hosts, Scott Johnson. And uh, I know when not to say the name of a crazy demon three times, especially if it's the guy that shoots bees out of his mouth or the lady that's uh, named after a drink. But that also applies to BB. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Beetlejuice and his three times of saying it and his yeah. often weird video game history where jeff where's jeffrey jones baby shark do 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 is it is it bb or is it bj it's it would be bj i don't know why i put bb B- she was trying to avoid the controversy and i'm your other host <laughs> with the most brian dunaway and if you say my name three times you will summon a retro gaming trickster who will try to convince you that the only way to win is to give me your crt now give me <laughs> <laughs> you have too many you don't need any more i just got this one that you can see yeah you guys can see that look at that back there that's playing a Ooh, uh it's beating is is one of our one of our wonderful uh friends uh sent us a couple of cards not too long ago we talked about them yep um i still got to review this one but you can actually buy this game digitally it's uh it's called meeting the meeting and uh and i have it run on my nes back there on the crt the one i got is called Yummy. zpf and it is for the mega drive slash genesis and it's Ooh, not currently nice. running so i'll destroy the cartridge but same folks, same cool stuff going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love that they're doing this at all. Yeah. It's so cool. And it was so it was so lovely of them to send this to us, and I just haven't had a chance to look at it because I'm uh, apparently, uh, you know. Yeah, you're, uh, you're, you know you're just you a little say, slow. Uh, you're a little slow. I'm a little slow there on the uptake. Yeah, that's a pretty good Michael Keaton as Beetlejuice. I'm impressed. <laughs> I've watched a lot of Beetlejuice the last couple of weeks. You know what the problem with Beetlejuice is? We're going to talk about the game today, but here's the, here's the right. overall issue with Beetlejuice. It doesn't say... Yeah, yeah when you can say the third time in other words the right. rules are just weird like if i said beetlejuice two two, two two three days ago twice and then say it again today just once have i done the three times what is the rule have they ever said in the movies i don't think so i so that's a good question i don't think in the movies if you just watch the movies alone now i'm sure somebody's gonna say well scotch and brian according to canon but that's great there's a lot of other things that go on like there's the cartoon there's yeah. you know stories outside the movies but if you just watch the movies it is not clearly defined what happens when you say Beetlejuice three times? Because as a matter of fact, in the movie, sometimes he appears in front of you. Sometimes he appears uh, inside the model uh, this in the in the attic. And sometimes uh, if you say his name three times, he disappears. So I don't think the rules are very solid if you just going by the movies. Now, I'm sure some nerds going to tell us otherwise. Also, you have to haunt something 120 years to, after you die, apparently. And uh, the Maitlands did not. No. Just saying. No, they did just not. Just saying. They, they did found not. a loophole. Yeah, they found a loophole and they killed Jeffrey Jones. Good job, guys. You did it. <laughs> they killed him. Sure enough. We're going to try to stay. By the way, if you haven't seen Beetlejuice, <clears throat> Beetlejuice, we're going to avoid spoilers. This is only a second week. Is it second week or third week? Second week? Uh, I think second week. Second, right? The yeah. Duh. I think that's right. Because I saw it right before Kim got sick and that was about a week ago. So. Yeah, yeah, I think it's second. We did really well in the, in, at the uh, theater, so but we're not going to talk about the movie much. No, not at we're all. Talk about the games. Can I tell you something? I forgot to tell you in pre-show, real quick. I want you to do. Yep, absolutely. Tell me something. On Tubi, there are two documentaries about Mash, the television show. Oh yes, and I recommend them both. They're both very good. One of them, in uh, the most recent one in particular, is very good. And um, you know, we grew up with Mash reruns oh, and yeah, all that kind watched. of crap. Right. Uh, and then, so here's what it did, though. This is a retro topic, kind of. I watched those yeah. two documentaries, and I went, you know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to do a complete rewatch of freaking Bash. Wow. And so I am now. I'm like five episodes into season one. I'm just going to keep going. 
how many how many seasons are there? Like seven? Eleven? Like that? Is it eleven years? Eleven? Wow! See, wait, it's more even more than I thought. Wow! Yeah. So that's that's a commitment. While you're on there, and if you get like a little mash fatigue, a little Korean War, like ah, you know, I need a little break. You can actually watch the Beetlejuice cartoon. They had that's that right. on Tubi now, commercial free, from what I can oh, tell. Oh, it's far on as Tubi. Tell. No, that's cool. Yeah. Tubi has a lot of that yeah. crap. That's weird. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was gonna say one other thing about it. What was it? Oh, uh, famously, the show lasted 11 years, but the Korean War only lasted two and a half. That's right. That's yeah. the joke. But it's kind of like the Simpsons. People get me like, they never age. I'm like, I'm like, but yeah, they only air 30 minutes at a time. So 40 times 30 minutes. It's not even, of course, they didn't age. It hasn't been that long. Well, yeah, but they also do modern stuff. So it, it can yeah. get confusing for people because they're like, you know, they'll be using Homer's got a cell phone now. He's got a smartphone. They do <laughs> they do stuff like that. And so I get why people can get confused, but it is a cartoon. Yeah. Let's remember it's a cartoon, yeah. everybody, and calm down. All right? All right. Just calm, settle down already. Uh, let's get into what we're going to talk about. Oh, before we get into the game, um, I saw the movie, the Beetlejuice, right. Beetlejuice movie. Right, right. See now how long and what pause do I give it before I can say it a third time? I don't know. Yeah. According There's- to the community TV series, it can give it uh, several seasons at least. Okay. There's a joke in there as well. Yeah. Okay. I'm okay with that. Anyway, yeah. um, I really liked it. Here's the other thing I wanted to say. Somebody mm-hmm. please stop me from getting the Amber Nick uh, H model uh, wide. Oh, that's thing. the uh, that's the square one, right? Not the, the new one square one. one. That one's a V or something for vertical. The one I want is the one that's exactly the same as that, but it's yeah, long ways. It's got an H at the end. I forget the full <laughs> model. And I don't know it's what the H stands for. Be. Horizontal, probably. Mm-hmm. Probably what it means. Probably so. You're probably right. You're yeah. probably right. So the H is probably for horizontal layout. Um, and so so is there, other than, hey, wouldn't it be cool to have some more retro handheld stuff? Is there a particular thing that you like about this particular one? Because I like I like the backlit LEDs on the thumbsticks on one of them. And it's like, that's pretty much the only reason why I like it. I'm like, oh, that's cool. And I think the H has that too. The problem with the V, right. the vertical one looks cool. And I like the bigger screen and everything, but it's got just one stick. Whereas the H is the exact same device with two sticks. Right. And I'm like, well, if I can get two sticks, I may as well get two sticks, right? Right. Um, I don't know, dude. Why do we even do this? I've got <laughs> enough of these. I'm good. <laughs> Right, they know this too because every other day, Amber Nick's like, "Well, we got a new one. Got to push it out there. Here's a new I know. one." Hey, hey, you know what you need? One of these. Yeah, and I can't watch TikTok without fifty people going check out the TikTok talk shop. There's Amber Nick something something model whatever on sale right now. Flash sale twenty bucks. Get it before you know. I'm like, I don't actually that's, need any of this. That that's the problem. Uh, if you get or if you're getting the forty, if you're getting the RG forty double X H, which is kind of in the same vein of what we're doing. Uh, but it has this more, like you said, horizontal layout. Um, it has two analog sticks down at the bottom, which is good instead yeah. of the, the staggered ones like you'd have on like what the PSP or something. Yeah. Um, and so, hey, cool, dude. Um, and the main problem though is that the fact they're so affordable. I mean, sixty six forty nine. If you catch them on sale, they're like forty bucks or something. So I mean, it's just crazy, ridiculous. Growing up, we always had to wait for the next thing, right? And if you did it for inflation, it'd be like spending. 20 bucks back in the day probably if i had a guess yeah yeah <laughs> I mean, it's like yeah. why would i not why are they why so much cheaper why are they so much cheaper on their site than they are on amazon amazon's got it for like 85 well, shipping. Is a shipping thing okay uh, yeah so that's what happens so i don't think amber nick has a very they, they don't have a large profit margin so um i think they'll sell you, you can just me and you we can go in there and we can buy a bunch of these uh and get a little price price cut if we buy in bulk um, and then turn around and sell those on Amazon because we're just warehousing them, right? Me and you just warehousing right, them. That's the reason it. why. Sure. So, but we got to pay for the shipping, you know, and so we got to make a little change for ourselves. But I think that's how they usually do it. I don't think Amber Nick directly warehouses uh, on, on Amazon themselves. So this is a little service, a little service some in- middlemen are doing. I just need like the perfect thing. That's what I want. But it's, but it's good because, you know, Amazon has it here already in you know, in, in state. So you can get it shipped quicker. If you order it straight from Amber, Nick, you got to wait for it to get through customs and stuff. And yeah, it's a trade off. Well, all right. I, you know what? You've, you've pulled me back from the cliff, you know, for right. now. I think I'm going to, yeah. I'm thinking I'm going to wait a little bit. I'm sure that they, they're probably about to announce something new anyway. I'm not interested in going to the higher <laughs> tier one. They always do. They've every, always got something new. It's like, why do they every, keep doing yeah, this? Every month. And it's always the RG double X, you know, it's always the same ones like the RG 35, the RG 40, and it's confusing. And they've put it on their site where they have, you know, they have, um, 
they, they kind of outline each one of them. And, you know, it's just a little bit different flavors for each of them. It's like, oh, this one just runs Android. This one runs Android and Linux. This one was a two carter. This one has a screen that's this shape. This one has one that's this way. Yeah. I guess it makes sense instead of making, I'm assuming that the fabrication. You think that's what's you know, going they on? They have something like that. It's just, yeah. And plus, it's working. Well, I, it it's is working. working. Right? People get excited. Look at me. I'm over here going, Check it on there, blah, blah, blah. I've got like three <laughs> Ambernicks. Why do I need another one? I don't. I don't. <laughs> you don't, but you want it. Also, well, this one seems like it's a little bit more geared toward, uh, uh, but see, then a widescreen for like PSP stuff. Oh. It's, you know, I'm I'm glad they're offering all these different formats for people who have different, you know, tastes and stuff. Now everybody wants a clamshell. Me and you wanted the clamshell. We clamored about it. We did clamor about a clamshell. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been wanting to get the one this PSP shape, but I'm like, you know, I'm like, eh. yeah, yeah. Eh. I don't know. I don't know what to think or do. Well, anyway, right. also, it is, we have to announce something. I almost forgot. We have to do this. Oh, you almost forgot about about this. Yeah, check this out. Let's play this. No, let's play. Not that. No, no, stop. I want to play. Let's see. I'll play a sound I got from this game. Here you go. <laughs> that's from that's from the <laughs> DOS version of that really bad uh, Beetlejuice game, which we'll get to. Um, we have a winner. The Analog Pocket we were, uh, did a giveaway for last week. Or started winner, winner, for. chicken dinner. Yep. This guy, if this is his real name, his real last name, I feel like I'm being punked a little bit by this guy's name. Um, and he hasn't answered me yet. So it's entirely possible oh, it's that still, it's, it's still open then. Well, if he doesn't answer within a certain amount of time, I will definitely go to the next person. But I pulled this name randomly from the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of entries we got for the analog pocket. The one I uh, will be sending is a white one. The one Brian's got there is a black one. Um, oh, look at that. Playing Beetlejuice for the Game Boy. This is how I played Beetlejuice this week on my analog pocket, which uses uh, either real carts or SD card in this case. Nice. Um, and yeah, so I, I played a little Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice on here. So it was a lot of fun. It's well, nice hand, nice it's machine. very awesome. And, um, this guy's going to get it. His name is Shane Peterburn. This going to get it. Shane. Ah, uh, Shane Peterburn. Peterburn. That's that last name. I'm not sure about Peterburn. It sounds like he's making that up. I could be wrong. And if you're just, if you're just tuning in, this is something we like to do from time to time. If, if, if someone donates something that, uh, we would love to give away to the community. And lots of times you will say that's like, Hey, give this away to the community. For whatever reason. Um, and so look at there. Just gave away an analog pocket. That's right. To me. Oh, no, sorry. Shane Peterburn. Um, that thing is it runs for about $250. They just uh, they just started uh, selling some of their new colors as well over there on the analog pocket website. I don't know if there are any left in stock or not. They have those every once in a while. They'll put some new colors out, but I prefer yeah. the whites and the black ones. It just makes sense. Yeah. But also just congrats to P Mr. Peterburn. You know, Peter Burn. Uh, also, thanks to Dan who donated it. Dan, Dan, uh, Dan. I don't want to say his last name. It's Dan yeah, P. Dan. But it's not Patrice. Everyone knows him. It's a uh, my friend Dan P. We'll say it that way. Uh, donated it. Big thanks to him. And because of him, Shane Peter Burn will now have a gaming device to play uh, in the Peter Burn household. Okay. And Shane, if you if you're like if you just kind of like dropped in there, it's like uh, you put your little slip a paper in there and it's like i don't know what is this contest i'll i'll enter on what this is all about but yeah, yeah the analog pocket yeah look at you, you can use the game boy the game boy color yep. the game boy advance it's got is you can also do sd card stuff let us know if you have any trouble yeah let us I'll, know uh, if you, i'll give you a hand yeah if you got any issues let us know we'd appreciate it and congratulations once again goes out to him unless he doesn't answer me and then if he doesn't we'll give it to somebody else but for now that contest closed Closed. Uh, Brian, tell me what you got up to this week. Scott, I, you saw the movie as well, right? I saw the movie as well. So I went and saw Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice this past week. And I also just been doing nothing but Beetlejuice. Before I went to see it, I went to watch the Beetlejuice on VHS. And I also went and picked up some this 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 Fanta it's so haunted bad. apple it's so uh, that is Beetlejuice flavored, apparently. And I'm just going to take a real quick. Sip. Have you this not tried this yet? This is the first time you're doing it? Oh, that's really good. No, no it's, it's not. not. No, it's really bad. It's oh my really god, it's, it tastes it tastes delicious at first. No, it's like a the is that after, supposed to be an apple. The aftertaste is immediate. It's like oh my god. It's when you smell it, you're like, oh, I like green apple. That sounds yummy. And then you taste it, and you're like, oh, a little green, a and then it turns into ass. I'm, I'm going through so many emotions right now, as you can tell right now. Uh, Beetlejuice is actually sweating from <laughs> uh, from the c contents that are inside this thing. Yeah, because like you said, it smells. 
It smells good. It almost smells fruity, but it also kind of smells like uh, medicine-y, kind of like, uh, like a rock star or something, you know, yeah. like a, one it's, of those types of energy it's drinks, but really, it's not a fan of drink. It's very gross. I don't, I didn't, I tried it. And when it. you drink it, at first it kind of tastes like someone's like uh, sucked one of those green apple suckers and yeah. they, they sucked all the juice out, off of it and they spit it in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then the aftertaste is like, yeah, this, this tastes like Beetlejuice's socks. Yeah, so uh, pretty, Bravo Fanta, I think you actually nailed exactly what it should taste like, which is disgusting. But I also, oh my gosh, oh, I also there. got this. Yeah, it's a, it's a Bob, this. isn't it? Is that Bob? Yeah, this is this is Bob. So if you've uh, if you've been to the theater, uh, lots of these theaters now are doing these collectible drinks and uh, popcorn buckets. At ours, we had like the gummy ropes. I didn't see any of the popcorn buckets, but we did have a drink with a uh, shrunken head Bob. And I really love this guy. However, I will say this. Um, I didn't think it through. Um, we got it. I was like, I want popcorn and I want a Coke and give me that Bob hit. And I thought what was going to happen was he was going to give me a uh, popcorn mm -hmm. uh, and, and then, a, then a cup mm -hmm. and, and then this. Mm -hmm. and instead, he gives me the popcorn and this. And I'm like, I don't know if I feel comfortable taking something I have not is not, you know, paper or something. And I, I haven't washed this. Mm hmm. No, you, you don't want to. Yeah, container. they want to fill it right then for you. And I, this happened with me with the Transformers head. I got an Optimus Prime head at the theater uh, to get right. to Van, and they said, "Hey, you want us to put popcorn in that?" I'm like, "Dude, I don't even know what kind of paint this thing uses. Like, this looks like garbage. I'm not gonna have right. you put food in there and have me eat out exactly. of it." Exactly. I was like, "I don't know, man." I'm like, it is, "He's got a little straw hole in the back of his head for your straw and everything." And plus, it was difficult too because I was like, "Ooh, how far do I fill it up?" You know, I'm like, "I'm gonna." I'm going to make a mess. You know, I was just like, you know, I was drinking it too. It, was, it wasn't comfortable. No. I prefer to just get these as collectibles and uh, get another drink. I just didn't think it through. Yeah. No, I, I didn't I think it through. I feel you. And please, please never do this again, Fanta. Gross. Fanta, Fanta, don't you want? What is it? I, and it's just sitting in my mouth like it's. No, it'll it, never leave, dude. It took me. It took me days to get that taste gone. Ah, what is that? Yeah. Even it says haunted apple. It's haunted. Did they, like it's haunted. Did They're they pick up dead apples off the ground? They just put it in Jeffrey Jones's armpit. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Jeffrey Jones really getting raked through the coals this week. He really, he really has. He yeah. really has. Well, it shouldn't have been a pedophile. That would have helped. Um, okay. I have no idea about his story, and I don't care to know about his story. He's an actor in a movie, and the people he hurt have apparently have taken action. So, well, and he admitted to it as well. He pled guilty, right? And, yeah, he's he's so as far as I know, registered sex offender is being served. Maybe he's also being he's in trouble again because I think he moved somewhere and didn't didn't reapply to make or didn't <laughs> didn't make sure it said that a sex offender had moved or something. I don't know. He's a, right. He's a psycho. Nothing I could do about it. Don't eat. Don't eat. Uh, no, it wasn't him that had eat. the gummy bears in his pocket. It was the girl on the bus in Ferris Bueller that had the gummy bears in her pocket. Right. That's right. And That's he, right. He was. Principal. And I'm sure somebody will tell me how whatever terrible person he is, and I'm sure you're absolutely correct. Oh yeah. He's, he's, and he's and then you'll dirtbag. look at me and say, "Should we do something about it?" And I'll be like, "I have no control over that." Yeah. You, we should. You, we should boycott his next movie. Okay. Yeah. When's his next movie? Yeah. When's his next <laughs> movie? How quick can we can we uh, wreck that deal for him? Right. I don't I'm think he. It. I think he's done. I don't think he's working. Yeah, I think he's done too. He's not. I'm on it. He's definitely not dead, but he's he ain't working. Uh, he ain't working. All right. Well, let's get to the the thing at hand here. Uh, we got a show to do. It's all about the Beetlejuice video game from 1988, and we hit it off with this. Shall we play a game? Brian, what if I told you the freakiest use of uh, eight bit pixels in the history of video games might be the face of. Uh, Michael Keaton from this video right. game. It is freaking horrendous. I'm going to put it up for everyone to see because we made it our, our album art this week. That is the scariest freaking use of video game face in the history of video game faces. Don't you think? I mean, look at that thing. I It's it's pretty good. It's, oh, oh. Yeah, I think it's up there. It's, real, it's not. It's scary. You know, it's a black yeah. screen. It's his face and it says Beetlejuice above it. It's really gnarly. And uh, I couldn't quite get over it this week. But anyway, we're going to talk about that game. That game is the 1988 uh, NES, some would say classic, based on Tim Burton's 1988 film, Beetlejuice for the NES, platforming adventure game, because they all were back then. Uh, right. This was developed by Rare. What? What? Right. Yes. Yep. It was, it was licensed. So LJN, uh, a well-known purveyor of crap, 
Um, because what they usually did was they, they were, you know, publishers just looking for some IPs and then they would negotiate deals with different pretty decent developers in this case rare. Uh, and they just kind of lay out some outlines and say, okay, this, this, and this get us a game. And yeah. then we end up with uh Beetlejuice for yeah. the NES yeah. 1991. Yeah. This yeah. was, this was shovelware uh, IP game time. The height that of was the, the bad yeah, stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When you say, yeah. yeah. I would absolutely say that because, um, yeah, especially with LJN, the people people universally agree that the stamp of LJN just like uh, takes the Nintendo seal of approval and just uh, lights a fire to it, right? It really yeah. does. Why do you think that is? What do you, what is it about them in particular? Like why them and not well, somebody mean, else? Well, it makes sense. It make well they they were probably one of the most uh, they were probably one of the the most aggressive at pursuing IPs, and mm-hmm. that's what they did, and that's how they made their money, which makes sense, right? I mean. If you're trying to sell a property, wouldn't it be easier to just, you know, hit your wagon to something that's already being spent on marketing? Like, you know, this Tim Burton's Beetlejuice has already had plenty of money thrown at it and everybody knows it. And all you got to do is just hit your hit your wagon to that uh, broker, a couple of deals and uh, watch the money pretty flow in you know yeah. pretty safely flow in right i mean eh. well the good news here is because you have rare doing it there's there's a, you know rare's a good developer they were even back then and they yeah. knew how to make and they worked with the any they worked in with nintendo a lot too so that was good yeah i mean nintendo was basically yeah. a major shareholder in all things rare i don't know if they ever outright yeah. owned them i don't remember how that worked out but it was i, I don't like think that. they did either i think it was more of a really good uh partnership now yeah. we could be totally wrong if somebody correct us if we are we might be wrong. We've been right. wrong a lot, but uh, Microsoft what? owns them now. I but mean, I, I don't remember when Microsoft bought them or if Nintendo was even involved in that purchase. I don't think they were. I think they just. No. Uh, well, I know they got some stuff that used to be Nintendo specific, like they got the Banjo Kazooie license and mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. some of the older game licenses and stuff. Um, my biggest complaint about this game, and we'll get right into it, is that there is tons of flicker. It's one of the most flickery games I ever played, and I was bummed out about that. Um, and you can see just, some of that in the video here, but woo. What the NES it's flicker? It's interesting. Man. Yeah, yeah, it was interesting about the flicker because we, uh, if you don't know what flicker is, it's just what exactly what it sounds like is certain sprites uh, start flickering for whatever reason, and it wasn't always necessary because there's actually an overlay that they decided to use that shows you number of Beetlejuice deaths, and uh, is 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 it rides along the s- screen everywhere it goes, and so. Occasionally, it starts blinking. Mm-hmm. The character, the, the character itself, doesn't blink blink unless you are. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Impervious? No, you're. Um, you're, you're not able to take any hits. What's oh, the, what's the uh, word I'm looking for? You are Invol- invincible. 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 I knew you were. When we you were close. Invincible. You flash. Yeah. yeah. As as a game mechanic, not as a a, a, a glitch. Not as a dirty person in a long coat. <laughs> <laughs> Not that. D- hawking uh haunted apple haunted drinks. apple drink and then and then nothing on you know right, right. have you ever by so the I way mean, have play- you ever had anybody do yeah. that by the way in public like when i was a kid i remember somebody in a long it's very stereotyped in a long coat like a what are those called long black coat yeah i'm listening what are those called though uh trench coat trench coat thank you and yeah. um he was wearing a thong in there and he was running around flashing kids and me and my friends were at the park when it was happening. And I couldn't believe it because I was like, isn't this just a movie thing? This doesn't really happen. Yeah. yeah. Totally, totally no, so, okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. It wear the thong. Okay. I guess he thought it was funny. He's yeah. like, this is classic. I assume that's, I hope that's what he thought. Maybe he was a, right. Maybe he was gross. I don't know. Maybe he was just gross. He may have just been now, gross. <laughs> pre- previously uh, on play retro, we've played the Wolverine game, which went to the NES and it was an LJN joint, right? Oh, um, right. I forgot about that. That was them. Yep. Yeah. And that was okay. You know, it was all right. And was like you said, this game, this game's not, I, I started finding joy in it eventually, but it's, it's a joy that you have to suck out of it. Like a, like Beetlejuice pulling a beetle off the floor and sucking the juice out of it. Exactly. It's not gonna, you, yeah. You can't, it's not going it to not gonna give it to you for free. Here's a little bit of no. sound from the game. I mean, per, u- per usual, it's your NES destroy your ears yeah. kind of soundtrack. Um, there's nothing really too special about it. No. And when you first start playing, you're thinking, hey, look at this. It's a platformer, right? It's a side-scrolling platformer, no problem. Right away, uh, Rare uh, throws you a curve. Because yeah. when, you, when you're when you starting out at the beginning, um, 
in in style of Metroid. You're like, oh, I, I need to come back to this later. Yeah, there is kind of a there door. is a little bit of that where you know you're gonna have to return to stuff for sure. Yeah, yeah. you're standing next to a door. It's got a it's got a lock on it, and you're like, okay, cool. The only thing you really read in the manual is that you need to squash beetles, and that helps you get uh, these. It's not called power ups, but essentially that's what you're doing. You're squashing beetles so that you can collect credits so that you can visit shrunken head bob in different areas to get power-ups and so right away you start going to the right you go to the right you you see a giant beetle and you think oh that's a, that's a beetle and you yeah. think oh get some juice book said to squish him <laughs> so you start trying to squish him and guess what you can't squish him yeah. like okay well shit what is this all about so then you realize there's a cloud you can jump onto you jump on the cloud you find a key like cool then you think maybe I need to go further to the right, but there's no place to jump to. So you jump back and then you go back to the beginning. You're like, oh, I can use it to open this door. And thus the adventure begins of where the hell am I supposed to go now? Yeah, the game um, is not great about <laughs> directions ever. It's and I realize this is a hallmark of, you know, hard, older games, platformers yeah. in particular. Nintendo hard. Yeah, at NES era stuff where... It's just not clear. Like Mario, at least, was like, move left or right. Okay, cool. I got it. Yeah. This game is like, I don't know where you're going. Where are you going? You got to figure right. that Maybe. out. Good luck. There's a lot of there's a lot more verticality to it. I thought, like I said, I thought it was going to be all you know horizontal stuff. There's a lot of verticality jumping up and finding your areas. And then when you do get these power-ups, the power-ups are like, uh, there's a Medusa power-up where it, like, it, it will pause the bad guys on the screen uh, so you can get to where you need to uh there's a skeleton power up that allows you to shoot several projectiles and uh, apparently scares bees oh how do you know that hmm. because you read the damn manual <laughs> um all this stuff is in the manual so yeah <laughs> I, I i recommend i really wish they had it went full out though i mean i love games that are like here's an item from uh the universe and there is the book for the recently deceased that's yeah. like the first object you got to get to continue in this game i really wish they had it written like maybe it is humorous maybe they did get us because the manual does read like stereo instructions just like the book for the recently dead maybe they did it maybe they nailed it yeah maybe, I'm wrong. maybe they got it exactly right yeah you don't know yeah you don't know i don't know yeah but no. would you, why would you know you don't know why would I know? So <laughs> I, I I played for like about 20 minutes and yeah. I was having no joy. So I was like, all right, time to break out the manual. So I started going through stuff and learning things. Still no mention of the giant beetles you're coming across or if you can kill them or anything else. They're just there. And when I finally did come across some beetles, they're like little bitty. They're about the size of your foot. And I'm yeah. like, oh, and I started stepping on them. I'm like, oh, now I'm getting me some points. Yeah. But they're coming out of a little hole. No mention in the manual anywhere. But if you go over top of that hole and you push down, go down in the hole. Oh. And you can start fighting other creatures down there and getting points there. I Didn't, don't. Just accident. I don't. Accidentally did it. I don't think I even accidentally did that. I think that's new to me. I yeah, got very that lost. People me play were like, you could do that. And I'm like, yeah. Did you lie? <laughs> do you live stream this game a little bit? I, yeah, I, I live streamed about three hours of this earlier this week. I, was, so, I yeah. wanted to, but here's the problem I ran into. I got so freaking lost in this game. That I was, yeah. I felt like I was just going to embarrass myself. Like, why am I going to do this in front of people? I'm not doing it. So I didn't yeah, do I did. It. I got lost, but I, I use I usually use that as a a tool. I'm like, hey, hey, if you got some tips, guys, what do you think we should do? And nobody knew, but it was a it was nice for everybody to you know hang out and support me and be excited when I'd figure something out. But this game is definitely not hand, holding your dead hand. No, uh, not any way at all. And there's a lot of cool power ups that make references to the movie. This one's mostly based on the movie property. Mm -hmm. um, and so you've got, uh, I think it's called bird, bird face or something like that. But anyway, essentially it means that you can uh, remember when, when they pull in the movie, they pull their little faces and it turns into like that beak. Oh, right. Yeah. That's like one of the things you can do. You can jump higher with that one. Mm -hmm. um, if you're the skeleton, you can, uh, you can kill the the beehives and run them off. The bees are a bitch. Yeah, uh, they're kind of like the they're the bats of Castlevania, like but it's bees here, so they're always up in your face, coming at diagonals. Um, and let's see what else. What else was going on? I'm not a big game? fan of bees. I don't like them. No, no, not not a big fan. Not a big the, fan. The mini bosses, like we were talking about earlier, are uh, are um, D D Daddy Deets. Daddy Deets. <laughs> Yeah. Daddy Deets, Lydia Deets is a uh, father. Uh, he played he by is, pl played by the highly respected J um, Jeffrey Jones. Yeah, yeah continue exactly. on. Exactly. So yeah. Daddy Deets, there's a there's like he's like one of the first. Uh, 
he's like one of the first guys you had to come across to, to go against. Because remember, you're not playing as the good guy. You're playing as Beetlejuice. Right. And so he's in one room and he's spraying some poisonous stuff. And it's not clear on how you kill him. What you have to do is you have to turn into the skeleton, use your skeleton power-ups, which you purchased from Shrunken Head Bob. Um, and you have to push him back all the way against the wall. Once you do that, then you can go to the next level. There's nothing to indicate that. No, they don't tell you. That's how it was back then, though. You. you were going to spend 50 bucks to be a little bit confused, and it and that was right. worth it because you wanted to play these games for a long time. And what they were trying to hide, kind of like arcade games were just trying to get you to put quarters in. In this case, they would obscure progression mm-hmm. behind difficult things that you would have to guess your way through because that was an yeah. artificial way of extending the life of this game so you didn't beat it in the literal 20 minute play time that you might need you just didn't know it right that's right. why people yeah. speed run for they do a game like this now four minutes or something yeah and Which it's because tricks. yeah because you know everything if you knew everything going in yeah, you know, it wouldn't have worked out that way. Actually, let's see what it is. Speed. Let me do a little quick check on this. Speed. And, and while you're doing that, you're yeah. showing some video of a couple of different modes. There's a couple of visual modes in this game. Uh, there's the left-right gameplay and also vertical gameplay. But then there's an over-the-head uh, area where you're doing more collecting and things. Uh, so there's a couple of different modes you you kind of bounce into, and the and the manual you know tells you how you can manage those differently with the control set because it's, it's an nes so you got your four-way d-pad and your two-face buttons and a yeah. starting to select button um also there is a progression in this game is is in the overworld part where you're picking each each area so you start in town and you're slowly trying to work your way through town and you end up in saturn where the sandworms are at one point in time as well I love so those there is sandworms. A progression system, so right? So cool. So and, cool in the movie because they cool. they went all practical with those. So cool. Yes, yeah. loved it. Uh, but the progression's there, and but just you just have to keep remembering. I'm playing as Beetlejuice. This is based on the movie. Uh, Beetlejuice's whole jam <laughs> was to uh, help the Maitlands out, which you never see, uh, by getting rid of the Deets. All right. So that's your that's your primary goal. That and squashing beetles. Did he ever squash beetles? In the, I think he's like no. Some in I don't remember that don't at all. He, I don't remember him doing. One? Ja- that's what threw me. It's like why with all these? <laughs> what's with all the bug interaction? Because I don't feel like he did a lot of that in the first movie. I mean, it's been a bit. And this is so. I think this is like this is ninety one. So even you know, if, if I had to guess, LGN rare. If I just if it was just a a, a blanket guess, I would say six months development time maybe so i mean the movie had been out for a couple of years yeah, right yeah. i mean it's been out for a bit on. by the way the yeah. speed run record set one year ago by a guy named k2123 he is oh. a uh, u.s player uh this is the nes version of the game 10 minutes 55 seconds is the current record wow that's a no Longer glitch no glitch full-on just like regular run i would love to see it because these guys just know where where to go and what to do and how to get there right. you and i would play this for five hours and go Am I done? You know, I quit. It's kind of annoying. I actually kind of have to avoid speed runs when I'm playing a game that is being speed run. I don't want right. to know that I can beat it in 20 minutes. I just don't want to know. Like, no, I don't want to know either. You know, I'm game even modern games. It's like, oh, this thing. Let's provide a 60 hour experience, and you're like, not in the hands of K two one two three from the U S. Like, he's gonna kick ass. It's- a skilled explorer of the game, not that guy. No, not him. Oh, man, yeah. Um, I, I, I played, I probably played about five hours of that this week. Uh, how long did beats probably less than that, <laughs> but I just, oh, I just yeah. kept trying different things. So I was like, I'm going to learn some more things. Uh, because this, cause the manual's not, it's not giving me all the things. And, uh, I did yeah. and I had fun. And, uh, eventually once you get into the, to the game loop, uh, which some of us just, have you ever played one that you got to grind? You uh, actually got to grind this one. Yeah, this has got some grindy levels. You got to go redo stuff. Not my that favorite. That and you got to uh, you got to squish the beetles. So to if 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 you're coming across if you're coming up on a on, on a boss and you're like okay I'm gonna have to have you know whichever power up it is Medusa you know the the beetle the beetle juice power power ups right um, and so you you've got <laughs> to earn those by squishing bugs and there's bugs coming up out of these out of the ground out of the holes. And they're different colors and they're different points. And while you're doing that, you got these scorpions and large beetles coming back and forth, constantly running in front of you. You have to jump over them. And it's just such a grind to get enough credits to get the things you need. 
because all the power ups are pretty limited use. Yeah. Like even if you spend you, if you spend five minutes out there squashing bugs and you go in and you buy the the skeleton power up, you only get like three shots off that thing, and then it's like ah, I gotta go back. Yeah, it wants you. It wants you to go back, and that was okay for things like Metroid because they were impeccably made video games. This yeah. game is not not good enough of a metroid to to earn that for no. me i've i There's, the minute it started asking me to do more of that i was like oh no 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 oh no there's no. a few little quips here and there that you know beetlejuice and by the way some really weird rendered beetlejuice like you'd showed earlier yeah um <laughs> it, he's he goes in between he has a little you know a little flavor text in there on he, screen he's so. a little chibi looking dude while you're running around with him when right. you are when he's doing dialogue, it's just that same shock face. Yeah. And him making that dumb smile and then saying things I, like I got Beetlejuice. If I want to kill the bees, I, I gotta kill the hive because the bees go to the hive. It's like, all right. <laughs> all right, dude. That's fine. But I, I overall I enjoyed my time with uh Beetlejuice on the NES. Uh, I even once thought about getting the actual copy for my NES. Um but I'm I'm not a big fan of uh, a floaty kind of jumps and stuff. And this, this feels a little more floaty than I care for, especially makes me mad whenever um, you have things you can hit your head on. Yeah. Um, and so you, they, they intentionally have things placed in a way like you need to get on a shelf Yeah. so you can get, uh, so you can touch a flower so that you become uh, invincible. But the problem is they've got these sconces that if you jump and you hit your head, then you know, then you're almost dead. Yeah, you hit like, your head, you're almost dead. You're almost dead. That's the rule. That rhyme. And there's, there's the toilet. There's the toilet scene that we all remember in, uh, in Beetlejuice. <laughs> you know how you can tell I have COVID. Like how low I am <laughs> now from when we started. <laughs> you're slowly sinking I'm in, sinking in to dude. the, to the neither world. Uh-huh. It is the neither world, by the way. I think we talked about this prior. I thought it was nether. It's neither. So it in nether. If you're talking about this in context of something outside of Beetlejuice. Okay. Inside Beetlejuice, they call it the neither. Okay. So the, the same place that we're, we're talking about the same place. But remember the place where you have to wait. World, you have to wait in the lobby call. to get called up. It's all yeah. everything that's weird in the new it's movie. The, the 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 janitor stuff. That's all neither world. Is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Neither. Yeah. According to what I've seen in the all the dialogue stuff. There's deeper lore in Beetlejuice than I knew about. I haven't seen the cartoon at all. Well, I I shouldn't say that. I saw it back in the day, but I don't remember anything. It's very different, right? It's not the same vibe at all. It it really is because, you know, in in the movie, it's all about uh, Beetlejuice wanting to hook up with Lydia Dietz, who is a teenager, uh, is being played by someone older than what they're supposed to be. I mean, I think Lydia Dietz is supposed to be like 14 or something. Anyway, um, Beetlejuice is trying to trying to get married to her um, so that he can get through a loophole and return to the land of the living. Yeah. Um, same with the new movie, but in the cartoon is uh, they're just best friends, right? Lydia Dietz and uh, Beetlejuice are just best friends They're you know, they're, they're on their weekly little trip of shenanigans. They're buddies. So you see they're buddies yeah. and everybody's tolerant of it. Like even, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Dietz are, are, are taller. I don't think the Maitlands make any appearance at all in the cartoon. It could be wrong, but I don't... Have you seen this at that. all recently? Like this cartoon? Yes, I did. Like, a, yeah, I watched it a couple of... Uh, I started watching it when I knew I was going to do this, like end of previous week. Yeah. Um, and it was a good thing, too, because there was a game that we played that was directly tied into it. And actually, one of the episodes is almost the complete story of uh, the DOS version, so is it? Oh, that DOS game. We're gonna talk about that, <laughs> dude. That game is bad, like really I, bad. It is. It is simple. It's simply bad. It's simple. It is simple. <laughs> and I was with you. I'm like, ugh, this is too simple. Yeah. Um. It's just. It's not. You know. Where are we going with this? Is this too simple? But after I played it for about two hours, <laughs> then you were you were in. <laughs> I was in. I was in. Do you a little? You know, you just got a little. You know, if if you, if, you, if I I, feel, I have a feeling if I keep drinking this Fanta drink, yeah, that maybe I will I will cross the threshold that will uh, make this 
uh, worth drinking. Bearable. Yeah. So far, so far, I haven't hit it. But <laughs> on the DOS game, I was able to cross that threshold and find joy. Well, let's talk about the Game Boy game first. Uh, this is a separate game. It was released for the Game Boy, developed by Rare, and also published by LJN, but completely separate development. Uh, features yeah. different gameplay from the NES version, taking more of a puzzle platformer approach. Uh, Beetle just trying to navigate levels filled with traps and enemies. It's a weird. It's a weird, different kind of game. Uh, I yeah. think I liked it better, though. I think I had a good time yeah, with this uh, compared to the for, to the NES game, and I'm not sure why that is, but I had fun with it. I think I know why. Why? So I did the same thing. This was this one was based on uh, the cartoon as well. So instead of the movie, we're we're more based into the cartoon area. Yeah. And there, uh, I don't know. They have much lead deeds in it. Anyway. So there's only so many game mechanics that you can have on a Game Boy game because of its limited size and how you can how big the sprites can be. So they have some game mechanics that work. Yeah. It's just they, they kept it simple, which is what you need. They didn't make it too challenging. You're basically uh, going around the Maitland's house and you'll enter into doors uh, and each one of those doors is haunted and you're trying to this is why I know it's the cartoon, because in the cartoon, you're trying to get rid of the bad guys and helping you're helping out the deets. So in this one, you're getting rid of the ghosts, you know, and each room is like being haunted by different ghosts. Uh, like they'll come down like plates will come down or if you're in the laundry room, uh, laundry will come down. And you basically, as you've done many times in the past, you just uh, find an area of the screen, yeah. watch for uh, for patterns yeah. from from the uh, the bad guy, uh, and then you and you kill it. So it's just real simple game loops. They don't try to go too far with it, and so it just works. If I had a Game Boy, and this would be one I'd pick up. It reminded uh, me the gameplay reminded me of a Wario game in a weird way. You yeah, know those Wario yeah. games, like not Lost Woods, but the um, uh, Wario World Four. I guess is the one I like the yeah. most. That there's a lot of that here, you know, puzzle You're platforming. Yeah. Yep. I think I'm wrong to... because each of the rooms, <clears throat> yeah, each of the rooms do something different. So we talked about the haunted rooms, but there's also like there's a there's the pipe puzzle room. So we go into go into there. There's a make a scary face room, uh, where you uh, choose Beetlejuice and you can kind of go through some. It's, it's kind of fun, really, because you get to make Beetlejuice have all these different crazy faces he might use in the cartoon. Mm -hmm. And then once you once you get that rolled like you like. Then you go into a button button mashing competition against the AI. Yeah, and uh, and it, based on whatever face you picked and stuff, it can change the dynamic of how fast the other the opponent goes. So there's right. a lot of cool things, like you said, Wario, where it's like little mini games in different rooms. Yeah, just trying to progress through. And I like those games quite a bit. There's actually even a yeah. couple of modernish games that that play play with that concept a little bit. It's always fun. Oh yeah, always a good time. Pet games. Yeah, it's, and it's perfect, right? Because that's what you want. You want small snapshots of games that you don't have to get too severely invested in because you're on a Game Boy. Right. You might be, you know, you might be out somewhere and your mom's like, we got to go. And you're like, okay, mom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, mom. <laughs> okay, mom. Um, also, they did a really good job replicating the art in this one uh, yeah. for the TV show. Like, it's dead on. And that surprised yep. me. I'm not sure why it surprised me, but it did. I thought it would look like <laughs> crap because I think the NES art is bad. Like, I think it's actually bad. Yeah. And this is yeah. not bad. This is quite good. Yeah. And it's, it's the difference between trying to uh, trying to bring a cartoon, yeah. silly cartoon to, to, to the Game Boy versus trying to bring real life movie live action to the NES. Yeah, there's something to be said for the stylization there that I think works in its favor. Yeah. Here's what it sounded like. Yeah. Pretty Game Boy, but a uh, little a uh, little closer to the material, I think. Yeah, a little more robust, too, than the NES, right? Yeah. I don't know why the NES, as time goes on, it just starts to be kind of paper thin for me. I know there are massive yeah. fans out there who love it. It's an important console. It brought in the 8-bit era in a way that nobody could quite do, and it changed gaming forever. I know all these things are true. Right. But going back to old NES games, hard for me. Don't know why. 
It's Something. hard, and it's going to continue to get harder because it's like people when they try to go back to the Atari Twenty Six Hundred games. Yeah, is uh, you know those are really. It's just going to continue to get harder and harder. Yeah, the <laughs> the Twenty Six Hundred games in particular are like, did we really play this back in the day? Did I play yeah. this basketball? There's only game? a handful that I look at and go, oh my god, they were really doing something here, like Frogger and Pitfall. Those uh, games were really doing something that I think are still playable. Yeah today yeah it's, it's few. there's it's stuff few. there but whew, it's hard further away you get yeah. the harder it gets uh all right let's now talk about the worst thing i've ever played and that's not true i've played worse than this <laughs> this is pretty bad though adventures of beetlejuice skeletons in the closet 1990 this came out for dos it had well at least the version i played had no sound card capability stuff so it was all like beeps and boops from the system in fact i think we can right. hear some of this uh I have to unmute. I think it. we're playing the same version. I'm not sure if there's another version. We I picked this particular one up off of my abandonware. Um and it's a DOS version. So I, I just picked the one up that was right there at the front. I said, Here, yeah, here's here's one. what it sounds like. I mean, it's just system beeps. That's it. Yeah. What a dark time in our history. <laughs> and you'd be glad to have it 1990 yeah. with your system beeps. Yeah, that's I true. think there may be something more that you could do there, but this was uh this was basically the equivalent of LJN. High Tech Expressions was a publisher that was essentially doing the same thing that LJN was doing with the consoles, but they were doing it on PCs and stuff. So yeah. they got a little deal. They also did stuff like Muppet Adventure, Barbie Games, Fun House, Mickey Safari, those types of games. And so they brought a very colorful, in my opinion. We played both this week uh, on the stream. Uh, we started out with the CGA version, all of us backwards compatible. So we got to see what it looked like as a shit show, yeah. right? And just those couple of uh, Scion and magenta looking colors, mm -hmm. uh, more closer to the NES. But then we got to, uh, to crank it up to, you know, like a VGA. And the colors get very vibrant and they look really good and remind you of the cartoon. Um, but really simple gameplay. I mean, if I got this, I know I didn't, but if I got this on the, if this came in my cereal box, dude, this would be the best cereal box game ever. From oh time. yeah. No, for, if that's where it came from, I, I, I'm with you. Right. But as a, as a game that's actually challenging <laughs> and not right. really it's, annoying and sort of takes forever to do anything. This thing is really <laughs> a slog. Uh, for those so who, for those have, who can't see is you're basically yeah. playing, it's almost like a dual stick shooter in a weird way. Like imagine okay. Berserk, not Berserk. Is it Berserk I'm thinking of? Yeah, Berserk, yeah, right. like yeah. Berserk, like Berserk, except you're, you're Beetlejuice and you're running around and one of the weapons you have is you can shoot your head out and the right. head will kill enemies or hurt enemies. You also have a thing early on where you're squirting uh, what seems like something out of your crotch. I don't know what's going on right. there. And then Beetlejuice. Lydia Dietz follows you around and cleans up after the mess you make. That's the game. Uh, it gets more difficult. There are more monsters. These skeletons get trickier, and you have to kill them in different ways. They drop weapons. You try those weapons out, and those weapons are often just like, like I said, like the weird goo, or you're throwing your head, yeah. or whatever. It's, it's just, it's really and basic. You, it's not good. It, it's very basic. Single screen. Uh, if you if you dawdle too long, a sandworm will come up and eat you. Um, the deaths or your lives are represented by a little small coffins at the top um and it's I, I kind of liked it though because lydia does go behind you and clean up you you kill the the skeletons lydia comes behind you and captures them with right. her ghost catcher if you're not careful uh the skeletons will cross paths with lydia which time she'll become trapped and she's no longer useful so then you have to wait until you can capture one of the the skeletons and uh a lightning power up will come up and then you can free her and you can keep on moving if you, t if you kill a skeleton and he regenerates, which they do, um, he becomes harder and faster, just like in your other games that you'd play like this. A lot of simple gameplay, but kind of fun and addictive once you really get past the fact that the first maybe 10, even 15 levels, it takes a little too long to ramp up. Yeah, Once I you agree. get past a certain point, it starts getting fun. Once, the once there's enough skeletons and things on screen, and by the way, they start bringing in other characters that are basically non-playable characters that don't hurt you. Yeah. Who's this guy? There. Is he just a dude, this guy in the corner up here? 
to see him. Right. So yeah, some of the characters are just characters from the show. So they're giving everybody is getting a chance to to show up from the show. If you got your favorite characters, Boy, they're going to they show up. They really here. wanted that show to succeed, didn't they? They really. It was a good show. So it was it was a really good show, and I I liked it. I like the backgrounds that they're kind of overlaid on, which is just these all these different crazy looking places that like to belong the neither world. Uh, and there's uh, what was gonna there was a couple of things that were really neat about it. I'm trying to remember what it some of the some of the game mechanics that were kind of fun. Um, oh, I can't remember. I can't remember right now. But the power ups is the big thing. That's because it's bad. Because it's, it's a bad video game. The, That's the room. Yeah, it's hard to think of it <laughs> with a bad say, game. You know, when it's this bad. I, 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 just, I like I said. <laughs> I just think it's a. I just think it's a simple game loop. Uh, and you know. Well, it's, it's definitely that. Way. It is a hundred percent a simple game loop. I mean, I don't yeah. know what you would have paid for something like this back then. It's probably shareware, right? Probably get on a. I would. Floppy. I would hope so. I, it's like this: if you're if you're watching the cartoon religiously, and some people really did, some people really love this cartoon. I liked it pretty good, but some people were over the top. Um. So if you needed a little more Beetlejuice in your life, and you have a computer, and this came up, why not? Yeah. I'll give you a little chance and. And if especially like uh, like one of the things I like about Simpsons tapped out, or at least I did like about it, pretty rudimentary, rudimentary gameplay there as well. But they kept injecting that week's storylines into the game. Yeah, I like that. So it felt like I was being brought in. This does somewhat the same thing, just one time, which is skeletons in the closet. So what you're doing is I forgot. I remember what I forgot now. What you're doing is there's an episode of Beetlejuice. I think it might even be called skeletons in the closet. Um, and it's all about Lydia Dietz lying to her dad. And as a result, that's a manifestation uh, of skeletons that came out of her closet. Get it? Oh, skeletons in her closet. I see. Okay. So there's and more. So they've gotta, uh, no. Yeah. So they got to get the skeletons and capture all of them to get them back in the closet before Daddy Dietz finds out. Oh, and that's kind of the whole thing. So what you're doing additionally is you're collecting, you're, you're grabbing beetles on the ground in between and is spelling truth uh, down at the bottom of the screen. And whenever you spell the truth, then uh, all this characters on uh, on screen freeze and you can go collect them pretty quickly. So okay. it's, it's a tie in. It's an episode tie in as well. Okay. That's probably the greatest value. Feeling okay. like you're part of the show, right? You mean it's not this amazing sound work that we got in here? I, I really feel like there's probably some more sound work because the name of the game at this point in time, I think it's on DOS two five or something like that. Yeah, that's pretty the name old. of the game right now would be uh, <clears throat> maximum compatibility. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, make sure it runs. I get it. Make sure it runs. So the version we may have may be set by default to use this the computer speaker, but there may be a version that later on use Sound Blaster and brought us some more action. I well, can't say for sure. Here's the here's a couple of sounds they make. What here's up, here's down. So you could go. Okay. You could do that. Yeah, you could do that. It's pretty fun. Uh, anyway, that's uh, Adventures of Beetlejuice, worth a mention. And uh, Beetlejuice LCD game from 1991 on the Tiger Electronics yeah. platform. I saw one of these in a store once and thought, that oh. looks fun, and never grabbed it. It's old. Should have. Uh, what do you think of the... Uh, we never really talked about the Tiger stuff. How do you feel about the Tiger Electronics crap? And if you I had this one, by the never, way, $900 on eBay right now, if you have one of these, imagine that. Yeah. Well, they're trying to sell it for $900. I've seen them sell closer to the three, $400 range, but I have occasionally seen one sell for more. But I mean, if I have one of these and it's in really good graded shape, why the hell would you get one of these in graded shape? And you got the height of beetle juice, beetle mania, beetle mania juice going on. You're going to try to sell us as much as you can. It's not going to go for the price they're asking. I didn't for. realize these anyway, are so rare, though. I didn't know that. I figured they'd oh, be a dime a yeah, dozen. They're, they're super rare. Yeah. Um, and and they weren't made by rare, but they were super rare. <laughs> and I never really cared much for them because they're far too simple. Um, and I, the only ones I played with, it kind of went like this for me. I played the Mattel ones mm -hmm. because that was the only options. That's what but you then had. Once the Game Boy come out, yeah. I had no use for the you know the LCD games. Once the game once that came out, the Game and Watch was a, even a even a better LCD game system. Uh, but then once the Game Boy came out, I just didn't see any purpose. Just in wasn't LCD in your games. in your wheelhouse anymore. I just after didn't that. see it. You, yeah. can, you can emulate these though. Um, really? Have you? I've, I've, yeah, I've emulated a couple of them in the past. How do they? You know, fine. How do they do that? 
Are they just graphics? Like they just turn them into yeah. pixels? Yeah. Okay. So what they do is they basically either recreate the background because that's how these LCD games work. They have a background, then you have your little LCD pieces that kind of pop up. And, you know, based on their positioning, you can have collisions, essentially. Um, and so that's all they did. They just they they can actually download, I think, uh, or rip the LCD information in the game data. But then they're having to recreate uh, the background pictures because those background pictures are actually physically painted on the machine. So, okay. um, yeah. And there's emulators out there to do it. I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a ROM for the Beetlejuice game though. So it doesn't sound like a, the a, thing a fortunate you're gonna... position. If you have this and you can, you can rip it and give it to the community. Hey, yeah. We're, we'll, we'll hook you up. We like yeah. weird shit like this. Uh, well, that's fascinating. I didn't realize that was even a thing, but uh, one day yeah. we're going to have to talk more about game and watch and, and tiger stuff and all that. Those deserve yeah. a show. I don't I, know. If... I know a lot of people have told me in the past, it's like, you know, Maybe they're maybe they had a large family or they were at a certain you know financial place with their family and see I was a little bit older by the time the portable handhelds came out so I could you know I, I could had a little job I could work I could get it but if you were a younger kid you know asking mom for a hundred dollar game system versus her going down oh, yeah. to KB and getting a little twenty dollar game yeah, yeah. might be a little easier to shoot for that twenty dollar game you know yeah. so yeah no that they filled a very specific cheap mom niche yeah. for sure back then yeah cheap mom niche <laughs> um that's awesome you got cheap mom go we get gotcha. get yours now worth nine hundred four hundred to nine hundred dollars <laughs> apparently all right we're gonna play a game of our own making this has nothing to do with Beetlejuice but it has everything to do with us trying to have good memories and good thinking skills and uh, we call it guess our game destroy it <laughs> and this week we're gonna start with me and a game that came out on the Saturn that's the oh. Sega Saturn I feel like I'm talking through my nose I apologize this thing is all up in my head right now I hate that man um anyway it's 19, a sega saturn sega saturn 1994. Uh, 1994 that's the year here's the sound let's see if brian can guess what it is Wake up, dear it's midnight. some actual gameplay All right, gives you a taste. You ready for your guesses or your possibles? So give me my choices. Is it A, Clockwork Night? B, Three by Three Eyes? C, these That's are all nine. these are all actual games. Uh, C, Angel Paradise, or D, Six Inch, My Darling? I don't like that last one. Actual Saturn game. Six and Inch, My call, Darling. And you made D, Six Inch, My Darling. Yep. Oh, Scott. Uh huh. Oh, you like Scott. you like that? Actually, I didn't mean to do that. I'm glad I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sega Saturn 1994. I have played a good bit of my Sega Saturn this past year, including trying to set it up to play online. Um, some of my favorite games have been spawning from there because I never had one growing up. But I am going to say I've never heard of three by three eyes. That's nine eyes, I'm assuming. Uh, Angel Paradise. Mm, don't know about that one. Six Inch, my darling. Hilarious. Never heard of it. But I do know that what you've been playing is a Clockwork Night because I've been playing the Nikes out of it. I oh. love the game. Oh, well, I didn't realize you'd been playing it, but you are correct. It yeah. is Clockwork Night. Didn't they make a sequel? Love or maybe they were going to and they didn't. Or they something? did make a sequel. Okay. Yes. That's cool. Clockwork Night 2, I think is what it's called. Would and you, it is also fantastic. Would you like to know the uh, Clockwork Night? Uh, speed run record. Um, please give it to me. <laughs> Lazy Curler in the U.S. did it two years ago. Fourteen minutes, thirty nine seconds. Wow, <laughs> these games. Dude. And that's kind of hard because this guy, this guy doesn't move very fast. And I'll tell you, after playing Clockwork Night, because yeah. I played all those uh, Buzz and Woody games uh, beforehand, the little side scrolling, and man, I'm like, geez, Buzz and Woody, yeah. I want you to steal hard from Clockwork Night. And all the night work he did, but uh, yeah, yeah they I did. Like it. They picked, I like it a lot. They lifted it. All right, Brian, need, you did. You did. That. You did well. Let's that. see if I do well. It uh, looks like we got arcade in 1986. Is that correct? We are at the arcade in 1986. Scott. All right, I would have definitely been in the arcade then because I was mm -hmm. big into the arcade in '86. All right, here we go. I'm gonna hit the thing. Destroy the box. Destroy the Only if he opens the door. Open the door. Oh, 
this is so familiar. Listen to that music. Rocks, man. Okay. Rocks. Uh, tell me my, my options. What do I have? Is this A, Rolling Thunder, B, Quartet, C, Slap Fight, or D, Jackal? This is a hard one because... All right, here's what I know it isn't. It is not Rolling Thunder. Rolling Thunder. Because I played a lot of Rolling Thunder. It does not sound like that. C, Slap Fight, no way. That's not a thing. I mean, it's probably a thing, but it's not the game. It's a game. It's a game. Quartet and Jackal. Um, destroy the boss. I'm gonna go Try with to um. I don't know. D Jackal. I really don't know. Scott says, "Give me the D," and Brian says, "Dang it!" <laughs> <laughs> Poop. It's quartet. But you were so close. It was quartet. What is quartet? I don't know what that is. Four player, four player action, baby. Side scrolling. Think gauntlet. But side scrolling and not a not a wizard needs food badly. Mm -mm. Oh, this! I played this. Yeah, I think I played two. There was a sequel. Correct. There uh, is a sequel, and there's a million ports. Yeah, this is a game. It's that <laughs> sound. It's totally totally had me with that. Yeah. All right, damn the, it. The play the gameplay is all right, but all the all the bloop, 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 everything is just what makes that game. This is like, yeah, yeah this is good. Yeah, good. it was, if I remember right, I enjoyed my time with it, but I don't think I got a lot of chances to play it. It was a rare one to find right. Ugh, at my local arcade. I'm going to sit up more. There we go. I'm just sit. I'm literally <laughs> sinking here. And I'm not it's trying to do good. it. I'm just, don't feel I'm, good. I'm, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I mean, maybe if you drank some of this Fanta uh, Haunted Apple, you would feel better. I'm, I'm about a, a third of the way through and, I think it's tasting better. I think it would make me shit COVID right out of me. <laughs> I'm putting COVID on an express train right out of my system. Yep. Glug. I do like the, I will say this about current day COVID, at least in my case, I can't, my wife had it way worse than me last week, but uh, compared to the two years ago when I had, this is nothing. Oh yeah. I'm, yo, I know, dude, dude, like the first time COVID hit my butt, I was like, oh, was I was, so I was uh, literally like, I was like in my office and I was like, huh, that's weird. Yeah. I'm feeling kind of hot. Yeah. And then like about five minutes later, I was like, huh, that's <laughs> weird. I'm feeling kind of dizzy. <laughs> and then about five minutes later, I was in my car because I didn't convince myself I'm going. And uh, by the time I was uh, five minutes down the road at the uh, local COVID check place, I could barely even keep my head up. Yeah. I mean, it was like just in just 15 minutes worth of just, hey, I'm, I'm going to make it to nope. Nope. I'm going to die. Glug, glug, glug. Yep. Glug. I, I feel you. Look at that drink. Giving it to Bob. Glug, glug, glug. Is it, a, is it a spoiler to know that that's Bob? It's not, is it? No. Okay. No. Right. I mean, he's, he's in the trailer. All of them are in the trailer. So, I mean, it's not a big, it's not a spoiler. Chat says standing desk. I'm literally sitting at a standing desk. Because right. I stand, I get I'm, I'm, I'm at my slumping desk. Yeah, I'm at my, sl <laughs> I'm at my slump desk. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, well done, Brian. You deserve your win. Uh, it means that it's now time to do some emails. I, but I don't feel good about it. I don't. I don't feel good about beating. Hundred percent, you should feel good. If you beat somebody with COVID, it's no different than beating somebody who's just tired. You're fine. Right. Don't feel bad. You actually, this one just. It's just a really good thing. That's it's a good one. It was yeah, good. You did good really one. good. All right. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, yours was easy for me because I just have a little connective tissue to it this week. So, I mean, you know. Sure. Fair enough. It. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, here is a call we got. Hey, Scott. This is for Retro. I got two games that have come out in 2004 for you. They're both made by the same company. They're called Polar Golf and Polar Bowling. Check them out. Bye. Never heard of Polar Golf or Polar Bowling. Are you familiar with these? I think I remember some of the Polar games. Let me see if they look familiar. Wild polar Tangent golf. Games. I guess you're you're golfing yeah. with polar bears? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And what was the other one? Polar. Polar Bowling. It's a bowling game, I assume, I, the, also with bears. The, the golf looks very familiar. The Polar Bowling I does love, not, but it actually looks like more fun. I like <laughs> ar uh, arcade <laughs> golf games are my jam anyway. I would play this. Right. No problem. I would usually agree with you that I would be the, the golf games because they're always fun. I like I like timing things. That's that's good. You know, picking your your, your area where you're going to land. But I got to tell you, this polar bowling kind of uh, kind of getting me. Is it? 
What, what was that? What were those? What were the Yeti games? Do you remember that? No. Were those like Flash games? There were Yeti games. Don't remember those. Oh, Yeti. Yeti games. Old Flash Yeti games. Yeah, there we go. Let's see all these look. old Yeti games. All these things were trash. I loved them. Yeti sports games. Are these the ones. Yeah, Yeti sports games. Oh, dude. I'm not. Familiar we need to do with an this. episode on Yeti sports games. I played so much of that shit. You know, when everything was like the games are going to be played in the browser, and everybody was like, okay. And uh, this was like a standout for me. Yeti. Oh, did they have a PlayStation version? Oh, wow. It's not loading for me for some reason. Weird. I might have a blocker that's messing with it. Yeah, Project Yeti Sports. I mean, it's, oh, there we go. I assume all of these have to run on like HTML5 now, right? They probably have to. They, it's I not Flash so. anymore. Yeah. Think. Oh, look at these. Uh, this, the crap this, of this thing. Seems decent. Yeah. Game Flare, games. Gameflare.com still a thing, I guess. Mm-hmm. All yeah. right. Well, good luck. Oh, man. I remember that getting past the, all those giraffes. Cause you had to like, you had to like uh, use a flamingo to hook uh, different. I can't remember if it was like turtles or something, but you'd have to like figure out the right angle, and there would be like a, a giraffe in your way, and you had to shoot it right over him, or possibly even land him on his head and slide it down his back. It was just, just like, and then you would challenge your friends because they would all be on the same website, and yep. it's just like score in. Oh yeah, <laughs> Yeti Sports. Oh, yeah, that's- well, while well, we're welcoming oh, those two to the Wii as well. Yeah, it came wow. to the Wii. Now that we're welcoming those games to retro, let's do it here also. <laughs> Fable is now 24 years, excuse me, 20 years old, guys. <laughs> Fable for the Xbox. Fable. Came up September 14th, uh, just yesterday, 20 years ago, 2004. Action RPG from Lionhead Studios. Players shape the destiny of their character in a fantasy world of Albion. The game is known for its promise of player-driven choices and outcomes. And uh, the good news is there's a brand new Fable game coming soon. Uh, we've yep. seen a lot from it in this, uh, recent months. And also a new Albion-based game from former Lionhead Studio head and founder, uh, Peter Molyneux. With something yeah. called, what's it called? Something of Albion. Anyway, it's like a god game set in that world. Yeah. Yeah. So but, uh, coming, uh, it's going to be play day one with Game Pass uh, coming in 2025. Right. Yeah. Fable was great. Fable 2 in particular, yeah. big, big jam for me. I yeah. love that game. We're, Very excited for this new game. So bring it on. We're definitely going to do a Fable episode between now and then. As a matter of fact, when I saw it, I was like, oh, we should do that today. But then it's going to be 2020 for the new thing comes out. I don't want to be too. Yeah. Too early. But too let, early to let me and Brian be the first to say welcome to Retro to Fable. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for being Great here. Game. Great All game. All right. Uh, I don't know why I did that first and listener feedback the other way, but I'm but I did. Hey, it's let's fine. let's talk real quick about uh this thing, the retro report. Uh servers like roller toaster toaster, coaster tycoon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, servers for Unreal Tournament 99 and 04, as well as Retro Achievements Info. All of this stuff can be found over at RetroGIB.com. It's also on our main website. So if you're trying to track track any of that stuff down, get a uh, game going in there, whatever you want to do, uh, do it. And also, if you want to let us know of anything cool that you'd like to see over there, uh, ping us. Let us know all the different ways you can do it through Discord, email, phone, doesn't matter. We'll take it. All right? Frogpants.com forward slash Discord if you want to go to the Discord server. Come on in. Come on in. The water's fine. Let's talk about Shining Force, our next discussion game. Shining, Shining Force. Force. I played Shining Force sort of recent. And I don't oh, know. Do I, I, I Yeah, just for fun. I wasn't actually trying to like prepare for a show. But I liked yeah. it. I liked what I played. So we're going to get that going. Uh, Shining Force originally released on Genesis. Hold oh, on. the Genesis was it? On the Genesis, I think it was a Genesis. Seems like it came there first. Yes, <laughs> was Sega it? Genesis was the place it came to first. Uh, there's right. been a couple of remakes since then. Made it to the Game Boy Advance, the iOS, and the Microsoft Windows. There was also a Saturn uh, version of three, which I remember yes, liking yes. quite a bit. Although I think that was Japan only. Uh, there is a ROM floating around with localization on it, so watch for that. Yeah. But uh, it was kind of there. It was it was as close as Sega would ever get. To the glory of Final Fantasy, right? It was as close as they would get. I wouldn't. I don't even yeah. know that you could argue they got close enough, but it's pretty damn good for what it is. Mm-hmm. Shining Force is rad. Agreed. Yep. So we're Shining Force is rad, and Scott mentioned it. Uh, the version that is on the Sega Saturn, and I never begrudge anyone who gets a Japanese import on the Sega Saturn. Sega Saturn did so much better in Japan than it did in the U.S. And so they got a lot more games over there. So if you need to fill out that library, there's a lot of translations already out there. 
there's 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 packs to do the translations and if you just it's pretty simple to to mod your saturn i that's the way you play it yeah that's play it like do that it. do it do it yeah get your english on in a different way okay yeah, yeah different uh way. anyway well done on that where the hell are we now <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> Sorry, I'm so out of it today. Scott slowly sneaks to the floor. <laughs> I'm losing it. Suffering from his COVID brain. Well, COVID brain aside, I'd like to tell you fine folks to support us at patreon.com slash play retro because it's how we support the show. Keep it on the air. And also, we give you no commercials ever. We give you pre-show content every yeah. week. We get X-Men and retro watch-alongs live and archive. All kinds of reasons to join. No reason not to sign up today at patreon.com. Slash play retro. Everything else can be found at frogpants.com slash play retro. Brian, is there anything you'd like to say in the shadow of today's discussion? Uh, well, you know, we we just did I was just thinking we did film sack earlier. We did uh you, you did some patron uh love oh, yeah. with a, with some with some art, right? Some yeah. artwork. Yeah. Um I wouldn't mind collaborating with my good friend, maybe do some uh eight bit art, maybe that's something for the patrons. Maybe a little, little Brian and Scott. Maybe I'll draw a ghost and you'll draw a Pac-Man, you know, we'll and we'll come together or something. And I like this. Something thing, you know, just, you know, just uh, thinking about it. I think that it. sounds fantastic. Uh, we'll let you guys talking know. Around. So keep listening. We'll be back next Friday with a brand new episode. And don't forget, we're talking about Shining Force. So do your homework, get that ROM, and let's go. Until then, play something yeah. retro. We'll see you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Yes. Get more at frogpants.com.